Here is Cape Blanco Lighthouse. We have a beautiful weather day today. Can we wave to our greeters? Normally you would park in the official parking lot, but I'm parking the employee lot today. Okay, stop. <laughs> I'm so excited! Alright, so if we were a visitor to Cape Blanco Lighthouse, which we are, you would be approaching the greeting center and then you will have the greeter come and greet you. Usually they're faster. Hey there, welcome to Cape Blanco Lighthouse. It's a lovely day to come out. We do offer tours into our lovely and beautiful land that she's been operating since 1870. And if you're interested, they're two dollars. We sell them inside. If not, you're welcome to enjoy the grounds. So can I use a, a pass or something? I don't want to pay two dollars. We do. You can, uh, if you have your uh, Golden Age pass, uh, it's free. And, and a National Parks pass. And a National Parks pass. And kids are free as well. Awesome. So with that, Nino, if you're interested, Nino will start your tour. All right. Yay. So we're going to pretend we bought our tickets. We're not going to make all of you go and buy your tickets. But, but if you did, to yes, Oregon, yes, yes, please do send $2 to the state of Oregon to maintain this lovely facility. But there is a nice gift shop in here where you can buy stuff. All right. All right. We're hello, gonna... hello. Welcome to everybody in Cape Blanco. You are actually at the oldest operating lighthouse on the Oregon coast. She was lit December 20th, 1870, and she's basically been going ever since. She's a fine old lady. Um, she's also the highest light above sea level in Oregon, 245 feet. We have some massive capes around here, and we have some big dangerous reefs, and that's why they put the lighthouse out here. We're also the westernmost point in Oregon, and that makes us the most crazy weather. You are really lucky because this is a really nice day. Usually we have some pretty big winds, and in winter we get the big gale force winds as well. Um, and that kind of puts into perspective our last record, which is we have the longest serving lighthouse keeper on the West Coast. James Langless came here with his wife and one child in 1876, and he stayed here for 42 years. No running water, no electricity. He lived with two other keepers in a nice big house. Here's a picture of so-called house, and the area over here is where the house was kind of at. At one point, they had 13 people living in that house, so it got pretty claustrophobic. 13, wow. Yeah, believe it or not. And they were very isolated out here. It was a day's wagon ride into Port Orford. Uh, the government gave you some basic supplies, things like dried pork, um, beans, rice, coffee, but you basically had to take care of anything fresh on site. So they had a little barn right around here. That's some barn animals. Um, there you go, barn. They had a garden where they grew some very, very sturdy vegetables. Um, and then they probably hunted and fished. Um, but that's almost a full-time job. But what they were really hired to do was the lighthouse. Look at her. Isn't she beautiful? Um, and they had to keep that lit from sunset to sunrise. Out of the three keepers that lived here, two were on duty every night. So that meant you only got to sleep in your bed once every three nights. The other two nights, you were up at the lighthouse. So that's where we're going to go next. Okay. Thank you, Nina. Okay. Mm -hmm. Take over, cameraman. Yes, absolutely. I'll put my fingers in motion. Okay, so here we go. the uh, camera's up in the top corner. Got it. All right, Paul's taking over the camera. All right, hi guys, here we go. Let's continue the tour. Let's take a look at some of the rocks here on the coast. This is uh, pointing north along the coast. That rock there that looks kind of like a square, that's called Castle Rock. And that is the Sixes River, very good for salmon fishing. And up that river is where the Hughes family had their dairy farm. The Hughes family was the first family here and is who the government bought the land from to build the lighthouse. All right, I'm behind, I need to catch up. And then here's sort of the western side, the eastern side, and headed back towards the Cape. That's right on Paul. 
Okay, and here we are entering the workroom. Now, Cherie will continue the tour. I better get prepped up top. You better go. All right. Welcome to the Cape Blanco workroom. So, like Nina said, they had to keep the light lit from sunset to sunrise. So, the lighthouse keepers would come into this room well, before sunset, probably about an hour ish. Come in here about an hour beforehand and start getting everything ready. Now, originally, this room was two rooms. There would be a wall about where I'm standing. See the nice tiger? I am. I'm getting I'm just getting the tiger in there. <laughs> I'm, reading, I'm reading the comments. <laughs> <laughs> there would, over here, would have been where their office area was. Uh, they had no computers here at that time, but they did have to keep their logbooks. This was a U.S. Lighthouse Service outpost, which became part of the Coast Guard later. So it was have, they did have to keep military level records out here. So they would record things like the weather and uh, how much oil they were burning and any other chores that they were doing around here, as well as any other shipwrecks or incidents that might have happened around the property. They also would have a workbench over here where they would repair their tools and keep everything up to order. Yep. Now, over in this room, which is called the oil room, there would have originally been eight of these 100 gallon containers in here. And each of them filled with lard oil. Mmm. Yum. Yum. Bacon fat. Yeah. <laughs> so they would have kept the light lit with the lard oil for the first 17 years that the lighthouse was operational. And after that, they did switch to kerosene. When they switched to kerosene, obviously more combustible, so they would keep that off site. Mm -hmm. They would come in in the evening, they would heat up the room. There would have been a wood burning stove about where I'm standing. And then they would heat it up, get it to its horrible level and collect the oil. On a summer's night, they would go through about a gallon of oil, which is about one of these containers, and on a winter's night, which would be up to 13 hours, they could go through three gallons. Now, they had to measure it through the gill. I had to go and look up what a gill was when I first got here. It it's is not a bird. It is not a bird. Not a fish thing? It is not a fish. <laughs> <laughs> it is four ounces, or half a cup, and that's what they'd have to record in their log books. They have then poured into this pail, and then my lovely assistant, Nina, is going to show us just how heavy this darn thing is. Oh, no. oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be 20 pounds heavier with the oil, and originally it was brass. So, like Nina said, there would be two lighthouse keepers that worked overnight together. They would take all of their gear with their oil and their other equipment, take that up the stairs, and then they would spend the rest of the evening up in the watchtower, up in the watch room, keeping an eye out, trimming the wick, filling up the oil reservoir, and winding the clockwork when they eventually did put in a shutter system to get the signal going. Around sunrise, when the sun came up, they would extinguish the flame, and then they would have a beautiful Fresnel lens that was covered in soot. Yeah. Now, the Fresnel lens is highly polished and is very fragile. It doesn't need to be scratched, so they would have to use very soft materials to keep it clean. So then, that's when they get our feather duster. Ooh, Ooh. soft. <laughs> So they clean with a feather duster, soft cloths, and a vinegar solution to keep it clean. However, because this was a military installation, they had to wear their very heavy wool uniforms with big scratchy buttons on it, which would of course scratch the lens if they got too close with it. So they would then put this fetching smock <laughs> on over their uniform, which would protect the lens and also keep that soot off their uniforms because laundry up here was very difficult and apparently it's easier to keep soot off of uh, this and keeping this white than it is to keep <laughs> it off the whole uniform. They would be done with their chores around 10 a.m. and then be ready to go out and do everything else that they had to do around here. But for now, they're going to go up to the lantern room. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Where did all these bricks come from? They were actually kilned right here on site. There are 200,000 of them, and they did the math. It was a lot cheaper and a lot less effort to hire a brick maker and excavate all the materials off of the Sixes River that comes out right over here than to have it shipped in from San Francisco and risk them getting caught up in the rocks. Mm, cool. How many stairs to the top? How many stairs to the top? Yeah. There are 64 of these amazing stairs going to the top. Wow. And this is the original staircase. It is made out of cast iron. It is a freestanding staircase. It is not attached to the wall anywhere except for at the platforms. Oh, I see somebody up there. Oh, yeah. We're going to go oh, see wow. Chris up at the top. 
All right, we're going to start climbing those 64 steps. Yeah. Let's, see if, let's see if I don't fall. <laughs> Make an interesting video. Come to my lair. Come, come to, come into the light. <laughs> we're coming, we're coming. I felt like I'm dying. I'm walking. <laughs> Go into the light. Really, it's kind of a roller coaster ride. Okay, now we're entering the watch level. Almost there. My apologies, the elevator's still broken. Woo! Made it. Welcome, welcome. Two in your group. I didn't get a radio message from down below letting me know how many. Just two. Steps, so just two of you. Welcome to the watch level of Key Blanco Lighthouse. You have made it to this little room where the two lighthouse keepers would spend the night together every night from dusk till dawn. This is their place. This is where they would spend their time hanging out, doing playing Xbox, doing what they did back then. The things they would do, they would keep watch, and these windows go in all four different directions. Stunning views. This is the they, north. This is the north window. Yes. They'd be looking for shipping. Hmm. Not sure how that tilting will work <laughs> on the recording, but yeah, they'd be looking for for shipping traffic and everything else. But their most important job actually was watching up. This whole center ring of the roof here was not present under the original lens, so they actually had a view to the oil lamp and the inside of the lens, and they would be trying to keep it burning as steadily as they could overnight. So. One of the things they would do is they came in at night, that door you just walked through down there, they'd shut it behind them and seal it, not for security purposes, there was no one else out here to bother them. That was actually to turn this into an airtight chamber. And then, all around the room are these dampeners on the wall. They would adjust these to try and get the light to burn as brightly as possible, so that it could be seen as far out to sea as, as, as by more, tri more ships further out to sea, but for very selfish reasons, they would want it to burn as cleanly as possible. Why? Well, because they couldn't leave in the morning until the lens was thick and span, so if it was uh, uh, sputtering uh, and, and uh, not burning clean all night long, then they had more work to do before they could leave. Now, you see here a little motor. Initially, there was not an electric motor. They had a small donkey that would walk in circles to spin the light. <laughs> ah, that's uh, how they did it. Yes, they did ah, that. But donkey. So, Sealed in here in a chamber with donkey poop and hay was not working so well, so they decided to scrap, to scrap that idea. And initially, the light actually did not rotate at all. It was a fixed beacon that shone out to sea in all directions at once. Now, that was very fine in 1870. There was not a lot of other lights up and down the coast, so ships could still pick out, oh, that big bright thing, that must be Cape Blanco. But as there was more development on the coast, more lights up and down the coast, Ships needed a way to know what they were looking at, that they were seeing Cape Blanco and not somebody's living room up on a bluff, or uh, a city, or something else that was on the coast. They needed something to identify it. So this pedestal actually was put in in 1912, and a clockwork mechanism was installed, kind of like a grandfather clock. This is still the pre-electricity time, so the lighthouse keepers had to wind it several times a night, but then that grandfather clock would use a system of ropes and pulleys to raise and lower a shield curtain around the lamp, that would cause the light to pulse in a pattern that ships at sea would recognize, and they would know on their charts, ah, that's Cape Blanco. Now, things, everything changed in 1936, we got electricity here. They put the generators down below instead of where the oil room was, put in electric lights, so no more soot, no more cleaning, you know, not nearly as much cleaning, put in a motor here that spins the lantern, and then they put in an entirely new type of lens that sends the light out in a sweeping pattern as opposed to all directions at once. So if you can like you see the lens? Can you see the lens? You want to come to see? That's fine. Nice. Hey, you want to see the 1936 Fresnel lens? It's waiting for you. Okay, oh, oops. Don't get too close to Chris's butt. <laughs> Stay on the rubber and do not touch any glass. I'll have to smack you if you do. Uh, oh, yeah. would you please? <laughs> Now, now. <laughs> oh. Order in the house. I need, I need one hand. So here. Okay. Oh, right, right. <laughs> Welcome to the sauna. Ooh, cool. So. Shiny. Where's the lens of the view? Shiny. And here's the lens. And the uh, light bulbs in the middle. Which, which, oh, Chris, the will tell us, which Chris will tell us about. But yeah, this, this is the part of the tour that goes on all the curves and everything's like, this, that, what question do I want to ask first? 
But we have here, this is the 1936 Fresnel lens. It is uh, made in Paris, France by Henri Latou, who is actually the same glassmaker who made the original 1870 lens. The 1870 lens is a full first order of Fresnel lens. came out almost to the, where this diameter of the um, rubber mats are. So it was an even bigger lens than this. This one is between the first and second order. So it's still one of the largest of its type. This one, as you see, is bullseyes. You know, the center of a bullseye will rotate past you every 20 seconds. That, that is a flash of light. So a ship at sea will see the signature of Cape Blanco now. Instead of a curtain going up and down, the center of the bullseye will be a bright flash of light. And you'll see that every 20 seconds. That's how they know they're looking at Cape Blanco. Every lighthouse has a different signature. Now, what fascinates you more? It's like, by this point, people are like, oh, somebody cracked it, somebody cracked it, what happened there? And I blame it on the prior group of tourists or some kids and um, prior hosts. <laughs> prior hosts. But in, in reality, this glass is priceless and it cannot really be replaced or repaired it easily at all. And it's, it's been in service since 1936 continuously. So lots of things have happened to it. There have been storms that have blown the outer windows out. There have been, most of the damage we believe came from cleaning accidents over the years, ladders falling, tools falling, it's the surest way to get fired as a lighthouse keeper. And then there was a, a little bit of vandalism in the 90s that was very, very costly to repair. Um, but most of you just try to take really care of it. We'd like this to still be here 100 years from now. Now, if you look inside, it's two light bulbs. People want to know, wow, how big are those light bulbs? They're just 1,000 watt halogen bulbs. They're really not too special. There's two of them. One is not turned off. It is actually the spare. It comes on automatically when the first one goes out. It actually rotates around so the spare will still be in the exact center of the, the light to shine this out. How far out to sea? About 26 miles, depending on who you talk to. Yep. Uh, I think it's very hot in here with the door shut. So now's the time to admire the view. Um, so this is pretty much due west ish. <laughs> As you see by the, the rocks at sea, this was not a, a come to safe harbor lighthouse. This was a, a stay away, this is going to smash you if you get too close. There used to be a foghorn here as well, and that foundation that's out on the corner, everybody asked about that, that was actually a radio beacon that was here. Um, so let's ships with the right equipment to see the lighthouse through the fog. Do a little 360 here. Okay. Hey. Hey. <laughs> And because you're VIPs, you can come around and get a few. Oh, really? Wow. Sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. And you may wonder, what's this curtain for? Because everybody seems to never really ask. Well, in the olden days, when the light was shut down in the morning, the lighthouse keepers would put the light to bed, they would tuck it in with the curtain, they'd wrap it up to protect it from the sun during the day. Now that the light is automated and it's spinning 24-7 and on 24-7, the light is only ever shut down if something goes wrong. And this curtain is here to protect it, so, because if this stops on a sunny day like this, the sun can go through it like a magnifying glass and, and maybe start a fire in the far, far away. That has happened at other lighthouses, or even more likely is that it's so hot on the glass that the glass will turn around or even melt and ruin the lens. So this curtain is here for protection if this has ever stopped spinning. Um, that never happens, except it happened to Nina. Yeah. She, she had that panic, heart-stopping moment just a week ago of the lens, the light stopping in front of her. And she's on the radio, panicky, calling the Coast Guard, like, emergency, send in the helicopters. But what happened? Was the Coast Guard was here? It was the Coast Guard they that came to clean the lens. How did the Coast Guard clean the lens? They cleaned it the same way they did a hundred years ago, yeah. which is basically with a vinegar solution and a soft mint cloth. Did they really wear French maid outfits? They did not, no. sadly. That Only was in your very dreams. <laughs> they wear Coast Guard outfits now, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, and that's, the, that's one of the reasons the lens is looking so nice and shiny yeah. right now. So Nina got to give tours with a little Coast Guard person's face shining out at her from inside the lens. It was cool. Yes. All right, are we... Any other questions? Are you, you well, there's, actually, there's a bunch of questions. I think we probably should get out of the, uh, the greenhouse. Uh, <laughs> Let's get out. It's about 90 degrees in here. And rising, because we should try to work. And we'll do our lockdown mechanism, and we'll take you to our head down and see what questions we have. If okay. you have questions about lighthouse hosting, about the lighthouse itself, 
go ahead and start typing those into that chat box in the upper right hand corner of your screen, and we'll try to address them for you when we get done. We will continue down in the workroom. Remember to turn around, face the other way. Yes, walk down backwards, it's a lot easier, unless you want to take the fast way down, but we just finished filling in the crater from the last guest to do that. Oh. Yeah. Do you want me to get the pad? Oh, sure. Yeah, that would make things a little bit easier. There we go. There we go. All right. So someone asked if there would be time for us to see the RV sites. Um, unfortunately, we do not have good cellular signal over at the RV sites. Um, I do not know that we'll be able to do that. But we can try. But the, the RV sites are about a mile away from here, so they will be quite a while for us to get there. <laughs> Much cooler now. Yes. Woo! Yeah. Huh? Uh, someone suggested that we need a wireless mic so we could hear the audio better. If someone would like to gift us one of those to make these uh, audio presentations better, then we would be happy to receive that. Yeah. <laughs>